Scientists in Siberia have confirmed the highest ever recorded temperature in the Arctic. That's 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the United Nations says it's a massive alarm bell in the climate crisis. Welcome to the Pole of Cold. Verkhoyansk in Russia is supposed to be one of the coldest inhabited places on Earth. But last summer, as these images show, it set a different record. 38 degrees Celsius, the highest temperature ever measured in the Arctic. The heat that we saw in Siberia in 2020 would have been almost impossible without climate change. The Arctic, as WMO keeps saying, is one of the fastest warming parts of the world. It's warming more than twice as fast as the global average. And with the heat came the drought. Even the waterlogged vastness of Siberia burned. This year, according to NASA, smoke from the Siberian wildfires reached the North Pole for the first time in recorded history. And every acre that burns releases more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But that wasn't the only alarming temperature record announced by the UN. This one was recorded on the other side of the globe. Last year also there was a new temperature record in the Antarctic continent of 18.3 degrees Celsius. That was recorded um, at an Argentinian base called Esperanza. And that's not all that's happening in Antarctica. Scientists monitoring the Thwaites Glacier, which is the size of Great Britain, say it's melting so fast that it's dumping 50 billion tons of ice into the ocean each year. The dramatic acceleration of this melting will lead to the glacier's rapid retreat and could cause its eventual collapse. Our next guest is Carl Friedrich Schleusner. He's the head of climate science at Climate Analytics here in Berlin. Uh, Mr. Schleusner, talk to us about this latest finding. What is your biggest concern at the moment? Yeah, good morning from Berlin. And indeed, this is a very concerning sign. Um, what we're seeing there in the West Antarctic is probably the, uh, the advent of something that scientists call a tipping point of the climate system. We have long been concerned about such tipping points, and we know the West Antarctic ice sheet, a vast area containing ice that equates to 3.3 meters roundabout of global sea level rise, might be destabilized if warming remains unchecked. And the gatekeeper for this tipping behavior, this irreversible retreat that would continue for centuries to millennia, is the Thwaites Glacier. Um, so now new science emerging that the Thwaites Glacier is destabilizing is a concern uh, not just for scientists or, you know, the Antarctica, but basically for the whole planet and coastlines around the world. Can you talk to us a little bit about the size of this glacier? Because we heard in that report that it's dumping 50 billion tons of ice into the ocean every year. Well, the Antarctic is a, is a whole continent by and in itself. It's the size of, of Great Britain. It contributes, this glacier alone contributes about 4% uh, of global sea level rise right now. But it's not even our biggest concern. It is connected to an ice sheet of an ever bigger area of the West Antarctic uh, that could basically uh, be destabilized and retreat even more ice. So we could see some modeling simulation suggest if this destabilization was to continue, that we could see a speed up in, global, in, in the Antarctic sea level contribution by a factor of 10 uh, later in this century. Uh, and that's the real concern here. If we are failing to limit the uh, global temperature increase to the Paris Agreement limit of one and a half degrees, we might really pass such tipping points uh, and this will reshape the global coastline. And when we talk about the melting, this isn't something that's going to happen. I mean, yes, it's 50 billion tons every year, but what's the long-term impact of this? The long-term impact is indeed what's really uh, consequential. So um, the 50 billion tons gives you, give you an idea of how, of the size and the processes at play there that, you know, some are far out of our day-to-day -day vision because none of us uh, has a direct connection to Antarctica normally. Um, but indeed, it is these long-term consequences, it is the legacy of uh, our climate action or climate inaction today uh, that we're going to see unfold uh, for centuries and millennia to come. Carl Friedrich Schleusner from Climate Analytics, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.